sometimes you got to turn down some clients who have the money. If you, but some people never get to the, 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 the bottom of the onion to realize, yo, I think somebody else would be better for you. Mm. That's, that's true customer service. And that's how you continue to get people to come back. So, you know, I just had this thought. In the beginning, when you're becoming an entrepreneur, at first, becoming an entrepreneur is all about you. Mm. If you want to be a better entrepreneur, entrepreneurship needs to be about the people that you serve. Mm. Mm-hmm. At first, it's all about you. At first, why are you an entrepreneur? Well, it's because I want financial freedom. I want to retire my mom. I want to send my daughter to college. But then as you're working through your process, like if you're doing a good job, you can't help but to notice the results that you're getting for other people. You can't help but to feel a way when people are tagging you wearing your product or using your product or bragging about your services and you desire for more of that. Yeah. And in order to get more of that, that means that you have to help people uh, have more transformations. If you're a product-based business, that means that you have to help help more people have good experiences with your product. Yeah. It becomes then about, if you're a good entrepreneur, if you desire to be a good entrepreneur, it becomes less of you, right? At first, it's all about you, mm-hmm. but it becomes, it, it evolves into being less of you and more about your customer. And the key to that is, when you start thinking about the result and the customer like, man, I really like how it felt for somebody to tag me and say that because of my leadership, their life changed. Wow, I really like for somebody to say this is one of the best jogging suits that they've ever received from a Black entrepreneur. Then you start saying, I want to do more of that. How can I make my fabric better? How can I make my service better? Because I want more of those kind of results, right? When you help more people, you get more of what you want by default. That's a fact. So it doesn't have to be about your six-figure goal. It doesn't have to be about your seven-figure goal. Make it about your customer through delivering service. It's never about you. Let me ask you about your process in terms of uh, when you're bringing a customer on, when mm-hmm. you're bringing on a client. Mm-hmm. What is your process? I think that'd be interesting because I know you got processes for everything. Mm-hmm. But um, what, what, is that, what is that journey saying, okay, I need help. I finally get connected to Donnie. Yep. All right, look, I know you're enjoying the episode, but I got to tell you, finally, you asked for it, and we created a Patreon, okay? We created an inner circle. We have amazing stories, amazing information, the how-tos from the episodes. The only thing we're missing is a community. So... It's about that time. We put together a Patreon. We put together a community because we have to have conversation around the information. So even this podcast we're listening to right now, there needs to be conversation. I want to hear what you got. I want to hear what you got. Like, let's throw some stuff back and forth. And because we're like-minded, we're all going in the same direction. When we connect, connect in a community, we can connect on other stuff outside the community because we're building real relationships. Okay, so... Check out the Patreon. We got three tiers. I don't care what tier you join. Um, the support is um, the support is appreciated. Okay, thank you so much. Now back to the episode. So typically it will start with obviously because the journey begins right here. If you're looking at me and you're saying, man, I want to work with her, your journey, congratulations, has already started, mm-hmm. right? So it goes from here to you now doing some research. So now you're probably on my Instagram page. You've probably clicked the link to schedule a call with my team. <clears throat> My team is a filter that I've had to put in place. I used to take every single sales call, Mm. but in order for me, but I'd be exhausted and worn out. So now I can't be my best self and I can't serve you best. Mm. So I've had to put a filter in place. Now my sales team, my sales team will have a conversation with you based on criteria that we've preset and determine what you need from me. Right. Mm. And then once we figure out what that is that you need, then you actually get me in whatever capacity that is. Once you become a client, I mean, it depends on what it is that, that you've gotten. So if you got like my six-figure accelerator program, that's, that's a course. Um, you get enrolled. Immediately, you get access to your course. Immediately, you're going to get a welcome email and acknowledgement from me. Immediately, you're going to get access to our Facebook group. Immediately, you get access to the actual program. Within your first week of being enrolled in my course, you're going to have an experience with me through our weekly live group 
Q and A, um, and it just continues to go from there. And my Q and A, I advertise it to be an hour a week, but sometimes we're on for two hours, right? So you just take Q and A with the clients. Absolutely, yeah. I'll do Q and A with 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 these are with my six figure accelerator students. So I'll do Q and A, but I'm there until every question is answered. Mm-hmm. So people love showing up for Q and A because they're not just going to be a part of the. You've been on my Q and A. <laughs> they're not just going to be in the room listening to everybody else and don't get an opportunity to get their question answered. Um, you know, if you're a, you know, if you are one of my coaching clients where we're working more one-on-one, you have that same early on experience, right? Um, the beauty about it, and you got to recognize the blessing, like people make a decision. I have products that helps entrepreneurs that start at $17, right? A business clarity blueprint. If you just need to think of a business idea, you can do that on your own. But even that experience is awesome. People get on the phone. When when you think about like business, I always talk about, I never say what I have to do anymore. I always talk about what I get to do Mm. because it's such a blessing. Like think about it, Shan. When 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 that language changed? About a year ago. About a year ago. Like during the pandemic, Really, um, that that language shifted for me. I think I was thinking it, but I didn't verbalize it, right? Like, I get to do this. Now, also, when that mindset shifted, my results shifted. Mm. My results shifted. Like, what I wanted to get and what I had been affirming for for years and asking for and praying for and manifesting, those things started to happen when I had, like, it's it's simple little shifts, Mm. That you that you have and you don't realize it until conversations like this, that man, that actually made a difference, right? I wake up and I think about what I get to do rather than dreading what I have to do. So I have to-do lists sometimes that take up two pages of in my notebook. Dang. And I used to wake up like, dang, I got all this stuff to do. I get to do it. I have a calendar. You know what my calendar looks like yeah. from the top of the day to the end of the day. It's like a lot. I don't wake up anymore like I used to wake up like I need to change my language. Yeah, I used to wake up when I looked at my calendar like, dang, I'm not even going to get to eat lunch because I got this, that, and the other. But then it was like, yo. You're dreading the blessing you're that you're You're dreading the blessing that you're asking for. So how about instead start saying, I get to do this. Like, I get to have a jam-packed schedule full of calls to talk to people to build my business. Like, I get to every single call. If you're on a call with my team, every single call is worth somewhere from $1,500 to $10,000. And I dread Mm. that. Mm. Every single conversation can turn into, and these are monthly. Well, $1,500 is, uh, yes, monthly. These are monthly expenses, right? Mm. I get to potentially talk to someone that I can generate $100,000 in revenue from. And that's a conversation that, that I had to have with myself now I get to hire people to help me out with these processes, right? So you get to be busy. You get to have so many people who are in your DMs Mm -hmm. demanding information from you because they saw something great in you rather than saying, I'm overwhelmed by these DMs. I can't respond to them, blah, 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 blah. blah. Who can you get? I'm reading a book for like the fourth time called Who Not How. So that's the, where? so who told you about that book? I've been reading this book for years. So I don't remember. Um, Maddie just recommended it to me. I think I recommended it to me. Andre. No, he said he said Josh recommended it to him. He said Josh recommended it to him to Maddie. Dang, so that's a book I need to get. Huh? Yeah, you need to get the book. And there's a couple of versions of it. So this author. is um uh Ben Hardy, Dan Sullivan, and Ben Hardy. I gotta tell the story behind this book. We're gonna get is to it in a second. Real quick? Is he white? Yeah. Yes. So I, I recommended it on the call today. And uh, my homie said, I don't know if I say her name. Oh, yeah. Brent don't care. So Brent was like, yo, let's, um, we need some diversity in authors because we had uh, Who Moved My Cheese? We had Richard Man in Babylon. We had um, The One Thing. We're reading um, How to Win Friends and Influence People. We read The Slight Edge. And she was like, yo, all the authors have been white men. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I was like, because I, I said, yo, we're going to do the who, not how, or who, not whatever that book is. And she's like, oh, we need some diversity. We need, you know, some women, some, uh, you know, like, let's get some black authors in there. Let's do so it. So that, that's the only reason I, I asked that. I have those too. Like, so you can implement uh, Valerie Burton, successful women think differently, successful women speak differently. The same rules apply to men. You can obviously implement Sarah Jakes, like, 
She has great stuff. Uh, John Hope Bryant has amazing books about financial John literacy. Um, Miles like Monroe. Kimbrough. You need to read a Miles Monroe book next. Dennis Kimbrough. Like, we can go on and on. More, I will say this. She says all colonizers. I was like, dang, right? <laughs> I was more, like, you're right. We're going to fix it. More up. of us need to write these books, right? right? More of us need to write these books and make our voices be heard in this space. Mm-hmm. So you want your book read? We want more Black authors doing this thing? Write more of the books. And there's some, there's many of them out there, so there's mm-hmm. not to take away from that. But more of you can write books right now because obviously there's a space for it. Gotcha. Um, so anyway, I was talking about um, getting to do and and transferring overwhelm into a different type of energy. And when I read again, who, not how, so I've listened to it on audio several times. I went and bought the book, two copies of this book Mm. because I'm afraid to lose it, right? Really? Yeah, I'm afraid to lose it. The book is that good and it really did something for me. I lost the book on the plane a couple of months ago. So now when a book is like real important. I'm going to add a link to this episode. Remind me to add a link to this for the book for people to get there. Yeah. So it really opened up some doors. So a lot of us spend a lot of time worried about how we're going to do something. How am I going to get all these calls today? How am I going to eat? How am I going to pick the kids up from school? When really the how isn't the problem that you should be solving. The problem that you should be solving is the who. Mm. Who can help me accomplish this goal? Who can I meet or who can I find or who can I market for? Who can I associate with? Who do I already know that can help me get this done? So one of the biggest bottlenecks in my business, and for people who don't understand that, one of the biggest things that stopped the drain from flowing effortlessly that slowed me down was sales calls. Sales calls, sales calls, sales calls. If I'm always on sales calls, then I can't really create new courses. I'm having a struggle. I'm tired by the time I'm talking to my clients. So let me now go and find a sales team. Sales team come in and it felt like when I got my sales team, for about a month, it felt like I had nothing to do. Mm. What am I doing now with all my time? Now I have too much time on my hands, right? right? So then when I needed to make sure that some admin things were happening, because guys, even though I'm an an operations um, specialist for other people's companies, inside my own company, it's like, It's like the shoemaker with no shoes. It's like the hairdresser who never does her own hair. Like the last thing I want to do for myself is respond to emails. And so who can help me do that? 